In the shop with me today is a beautiful 1991 Dodge Ram equipped with the 12 valve Cummins. This is the first generation Cummins with the VE pump, not known to be that strong. Okay, we put up a horsepower. <laughs> this is the slowest truck I've ever driven. So we're gonna throw it on the dyno, see how much horsepower and torque it makes stock, and then we're gonna double it. I saw on the draggy a 1450 something eighth mile. I mean, that's pretty bad. You would hope that you know we could get it to a 14 something quarter mile when we're done, but dude, I don't know. Guys, we're back from the road test. This thing is pathetic. Slow, 14 plus seconds in the eighth mile. Come on, 160 from the factory. Hopefully it makes 128 to the tire, 130. I don't know, we'll see. Dude, I'm a real YouTube star now. Does a cleaner vehicle make more power on the dyno? <laughs> so this thing is blisteringly fast. We did a run from 1500 to 2500 rpm it would not go any higher it governed out like it just flatlined all right so i'm in front of the big dyno screen here a whopping 140 horsepower so this thing felt slow but that's what it should do it's a 160 the factory we got 140 horse 387 torque on a 400 factory rated torque this thing's right in line there looks like we peaked around 14 pounds of boost Horsepower peaked up there around 2200 RPM and the torque peaked down here, you know, almost 1800. So we've got to hit 280 horsepower and roughly 800 pound feet of torque to double the torque. I, I think we can do it. So we're about to put some parts on this first gen because we got to double the horsepower. Look up here on the dash. Now this truck belongs to Weston Champlin. He's the chief redneck scientist from Kansas. And it looks like he's got some E3 spark plugs. I have no idea what he was going to do with those spark plugs. Look up here. When I came here, I saw these E3 spark plugs on the dash. And I was like, is this a redneck science experiment that never got finished? Were you going to put spark plugs in your Cummins? What, what are I, these for? I, you know, I honestly don't remember. I thought you guys put them in there. They were there when I got the truck. And so I assumed this was something from Kansas that didn't quite get I finished was yet. I was trying to throw them off my trail. There's a top secret project going on behind the scenes. You'll see it eventually. I don't think we're gonna need these with what we're gonna do to this truck. I can't wait to make 300 horsepower in a Cummins. This is like the most exciting thing ever. Killing it, man. This is where the magic fuel pin lives. There is the factory fuel pin. This fancy little diaphragm. This looks just like a P pump, except it's black instead of red. So now we're gonna put some five by 14 injectors in this truck. The first two injectors came right out. Cylinder three, stuck. So grab this power driven injector puller tool. What's cool is this does both second gen and first gen because the injector nut size is different. Ta-da! Might be a little more injector than we need to double the power, but you know, I wanna make dang good and sure we have plenty of fuel to get our, our number. We can always add more turbo later. It's, it's a pain to add more fuel in my opinion. All right, so we got the fuel injectors installed and the fuel pin. This thing's still strapped on the dyno, so we're gonna dyno it right now and see if we double the power just by putting the injectors in a fuel pin, or are we gonna need more? Let's see what happens. All right, so with just the injectors and the fuel pin, we hit 199 horsepower to the tire. So we picked up just shy of 60 horsepower, actually 59 horsepower. Torque went 545. Remember, we were at 387 on the torque, so we're around 170, 175 torque gain. We got our work cut out for it. We got to add another 80 horsepower to uh, hit our goal. So we're gonna turn up the fuel screw on the pump now and see where that gets us. The fuel screw is right there. Yeah, it's doing it, okay. All right, so I turned the fuel screw up three turns. Briefly, let me explain what a fuel screw is. Pretend like the injection pump has a teeter-totter in it. The top part of the teeter-totter is the fuel screw. The middle part is the fuel pin, and the bottom is how much it actually adds fuel. If you turn the fuel screw in and you have a deeper fuel pin, you can get to the point where the, the pump can travel so far, it can get into a runaway. So whenever you're doing this, this is why I didn't start with this, you need a buddy 
over there with the intake off the turbo and a board so he can shut off the air to the truck if it decides to run away when you start it up. If you're doing it by yourself, most guys will take the boost tube off right here because it's really easy to snuff the turbo or the air right here. And then after you get to the point of a runaway, then people usually back it off half a turn or something crazy. I'm not that crazy. I don't want to teach you guys how to make your truck run away and blow up. But to be safe, out of an abundance of caution, after turning the fuel screw in three full turns, we, uh, I got a buddy with a board. All right, you ready? Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't run away, but you never know. Success, no runaway, and you notice the idle is higher. When the idle goes up, that means you turn the fuel up. All right, here we go, here's your nothing. All right, three turns of the fuel screw. We hit 213 horsepower to the tire, so we picked up 14 horsepower, and we went 593 on the torque. I don't remember the exact torque. Was it 545 before? So we picked up almost 50 foot-pounds, 48 pound-feet, foot-pounds, whatever you want to say. So, um, but it did go higher. So adding the fuel screw allowed it to go higher RPM but that was a very dismal, underwhelming. I mean, it's worthwhile. I mean, if you can turn a screw and gain 14 horsepower, that's great. But I mean, come on, 14 horsepower. I didn't get out of bed for less than 100. So next, we are going to turn the fuel screw up more. Maybe we will take it to run away. And maybe we'll take it to run away and see what's actually there. And then timing. And after that, the only thing we have left is like more air at that point or a built pump. <laughs> or a transmission that's not or a, slush a transmission box. that's not a slush box. So, this has been more of a challenge than I expected it to be. Keep following along; it's going to get interesting. Hey, you said you hot. That might be all she wrote, man. All right, so we only get a half turn more, and it will not go in anymore. So I assume I'm at to the point where it's going to break something, or maybe we're at the runaway point. So we'll. Uh, Start it now and see what happens. Yay for us. So we're just over 230 horsepower. We have confirmed that the fuel pressure is dropping to zero. So we are going to have to upgrade the fuel lift pump. This factory style diaphragm pump is pulling down to zero PSI. And you know the diaphragm setup, they're just not really designed for high performance. So we're gonna put a P-pump style or a piston pump on here. Now this is one that we've modified in-house with a lighter spring. So this would be considered like a high volume, low pressure pump is what other companies call this. Next, we're gonna put a 3200 RPM governor spring in this truck. Ta-da! We got the governor spring in, the new lift pump. Let's hit it and see what this thing does. 70, come on, 280, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh, 280 on the dot, dude. <laughs> no way. No. Dude, we did it. We doubled the power, all right? Just barely. <laughs> on the dot. 280 at a 2611 RPM, and Willie ran it to 2664. So, yeah. Now, the engine's going higher RPM than that, but uh, it's going through the torque converter. Let's see what the peak boost and everything was, though. Yeah, look. Peak horsepower right at the end of the run. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, peak boost, dude, we're at 25.9 pounds of boost, so 26 pounds of boost. And uh, our torque peaked at, uh, so we can go on the summary, 758. I'm really curious what this would do with a lockup transmission in it. I know with a manual transmission, it would make more because you're losing some of the torque converter, but what would it do with a lockup transmission? Because West and Champlin's in town, we decided we need to put a lockup transmission and a new pump in this to see if that rusty pump was holding us back. So we got on the dyno, we're gonna see what is the new 140 cc VE pump and lockup transmission worth on this old first gen Cummins. 
and uh, fingers crossed, we can get in that magic 300 horsepower range. It's going to rip. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. It's going to make 300, maybe 350, probably not 350, but we're going to hope. We always hope big and just see how that works. <laughs> if that don't work, there's a big old thing of turbos back there. Gotta know. Okay, we hit save results and it'll tell us the total numbers right here. Yeah, it's a good one. 322 horsepower. Dude, that picked up a lot just for a different trains. 322, 753 torque. This thing might actually rip a bit. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a solid runner. Let's turn the boost on, see what the boost it made. Had a little funny when it did that overdrive shift, it pulled it down and then recovered. So total boost right here. So right before we grabbed overdrive, it hit 28 pounds and then it bogged her down a little. So maybe I got into overdrive a little too quick. Engine speed. It took her clear up to 2,900 RPM. But she's still making good torque. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty flat. So. 300 and, what was there some right here? 320, I think? 322, 753. So wait, it made, what did it make with the other trains? 280? 280. So it picked up 42 horsepower just over a lockup converter. That's how much you'll lose in the control. And we did put a different pump, but I had that other one maxed out. So there Should might be. be five horsepower in the pump, might be nothing. Hey, that means we could get pulled over for speeding though. You know, 100 miles an hour? She would do 100 now. <laughs> she would barely do that before. It was not good. Should we do one more run just to, because sometimes they do better on the second run when it's hot. Yes, mom. Might be the most powerful thing you guys have ever had in your dyno. I've never worked so hard in my life for 300 horsepower, ever. <laughs> ever. But, for somebody that don't want to put a pee pump on their first thing, <laughs> Look at that! We picked up a horsepower! So that hot motor really, really went hard. Picked up one more horsepower. So it's consistent, though. Yeah, it is consistent. Her torque's down a little, but I didn't get after it as early this time. Trying to save the heat soak to see if it'd get more power. And well, kind of... I think what this means is we can take it practice racing. We'll be real consistent. So it started off at 140 horse, got to 280, put a different trans in it with lockup, and now it makes 323 out of a first gen, which these things are normally 160 horse, 400 torque. That's all they make. And you know how I know that? They wrote that on the valve cover. <laughs> I mean, they were so proud of that back in 1994. 400 foot pounds of torque. There ain't nothing ain't gonna, ever going to be more powerful than that, you know? Well, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Power Driven Diesel's YouTube channel. And we got to see if this does a burnout now. Do you want to do the burnout? Yeah. They're your tires. All right. <laughs> close us out with the burnout, guys.